It is definitely kindling season again. And I keep splitting my kindling with this stupid little hatchet. But it's weighted, so it's pretty heavy. I also like this one. It's kind of a work of art. World War I era from what my Google searches tell me. And that makes me really, well, cautious about modifying it too much. I don't even want to reseed it, but it's starting to work its way out of the handle. I'm in no hurry. I like to split little tiny things with that because there's a lot of control. The short blade makes the weight back on it and it makes it so precise. You hit exactly where you aim and that's a lovely thing, feature. The Harbor Freight one, I don't like to split kindling with that. So uh, in this video I'm going to fix up one that I've had for a while. Here, take a look at it. It's a true temper. It's nice and heavy. Handle's not a bad shape. It's hickory. Uh, uh, it's set in here pretty well, so I don't want to take it back out. But look at this. The grind on its head is just awful. It's completely to one side. And I know that there are cases where you might want to work something like this and keep the axe head low to your work, but that's not, I, I just can't work with this. It's going to glance off and hurt me, and I don't want that. So I'm going to attempt to give it a cut that centers it again. The thing has extremely low miles on it, it even still has the stickers. But in this state, I just can't use it. So I'll scrape this lacquer off, give it an oiling, fix the head. You know the drill. But not tonight. <laughs> there we go. I'll start first thing in the morning because for tonight, I'm going to go get some dinner and some sleep. Okay, good morrow. Like they say in wherever. The first thing we'll need is a chainsaw. That's right, a chainsaw. The idea was drive a wedge in 
and leave some hinge wood and the jaws would tighten on the hatchet but maybe it's the time of year or maybe the design just because of the type of grain that is but the hinge wood cracked but that wasn't entirely unexpected I think we can still get it to work Why did I go through this much trouble? Because I want to do the grinding outside so I can use lots of water. And this way I'm not stuck with being right beside the vise the whole time. And I just kind of wanted to try it out. If you've got an axe to grind, this is the time of year to do it. It's it never even got above room temperature because it's chilly outside. And that couldn't have taken me five minutes tops and now I'm within file range. It's a hard skill to explain. Watching won't do any good. You have to actually practice and try to understand how it works. It's very difficult to explain and it's also very difficult to capture on film. It's an interesting skill to learn. I recommend you try it sometime if you haven't. There's some progress, but I'll have to finish it next time I get some time. <laughs> Almost usable. We're getting there. There's just this one last thing. This is my favorite file. I borrowed it from work maybe 12 years ago, so if you're watching this, Dave, I'll remind you that you still have my screw caddy. Well, it's a some kind of taper file. It's about a foot long, and I've tried others, and I know this is probably not the most appropriate, but this one just seems to cut the best. Also, the golf ball handle, I, I can't recommend enough. It doesn't really matter what brand golf ball you use, but uh, this Nicholson file, lovely tool. I've expressed before that this is my favorite part because this is where we start to see real progress. For several different videos, I have taken several different approaches to putting an edge on an axe or a hatchet. 
And some of those methods were intense attempts at being crowd pleasers. In reality, there's no use. I have no use for a stone. Because if you file your bit, it's going to be every, every bit sharp enough for what you're going to use a hatchet for. I will also here admit to you that in contrast to the opinions of the safety sallies, I like to have the sharp edge pointing towards me more often than not when I'm sharpening. So for my kindling hatchet, I will only be using a file and no stone work. Uh, I think it's totally unnecessary. We sometimes get these compulsions that we become obsessed with and using a stone on a, a frequent use hatchet is akin to washing your hands with bleach before you eat. <laughs> and also I'm batting out of order here because I want to work on the handle before I sharpen this. This will be dangerous when it's done. No vice simply because I'm trying to show some alternative methods. Speaking of crowd pleasing, this shape is kind of following the archetype for what people expect to see in a hatchet, but uh, I think it's too narrow here, and I think it's too sharp there, and there's too much meat here. You don't need so much thickness up here. You're, this is not an axe. You don't need a, a guard here. Um, you're not going to miss. It's a hatchet. If you are missing and hitting there and suffering lots of wear, you need to slow down those <laughs> that hatchet speed. <laughs> what else? Um, I think this design implies that you're only going to hold it that way, and I don't like that. I think it's somewhat constricting so I would like if the curve were a little milder so I'll try to take off some of the high parts as I shape it also I'm going to cut a little there make the butt a little bit bigger my reasoning is that my pinky is isn't going to go beyond this palm swell very much anyway so there's at least a half inch that's just sticking over to hit things, and it's a hatchet, so counterbalance is not necessary. This is just reductive sculpture. It's no different from whittling. You see a little place that you want to thin it down, and you do so, just a little bit at a time, a little piece at a time. And you step back, zoom out, take a look at what you've done, and see if you like your progress. If not, you stop and try to correct. You can use every tool at your disposal. Just go slow and think. Be sure to read and understand all warning labels before removing them. Okay, I understand that it's about liability, but a warning on a hatchet? Really? <laughs> See this hard line here where the contour changes? I try to avoid words like should <laughs> when I'm making videos like this but you should probably remove things like this 
we want it to be smooth, organic. The transition should be gradual. That was admittedly satisfying. It looks and feels much better. I was able to remove a considerable amount of mass from this belly here and a, I took a lot of the sharpness that it had away. It's just going to be much more comfortable now. Uh, now it's time for some sanding. I have a detail sander here for getting up there near the head. It might, be, it might seem counterintuitive, but this is something to remember. Use a flat stick first. Even though this is a contour, something flat will reveal little divots that if you were to just jump right in with regular sandpaper, you might dish them out worse or just gloss them over. So use something flat first to kind of reveal the big picture to you and then go over it with hand sandpaper. I'm using 100 and then I'll finish with 220. Not even a slight doubt in my mind. A wooden handle is the best. While the handle dries, let's address this problem in the eye. These ones back here are small enough that I can just fill them full of epoxy, but for this one, I'm going to ram a hickory wedge in there. Some of you are probably suffering over this sticker. And I can't say that I blame you. <sighs> Hope that brought an end to your pain. And the project stretches itself into another day. But that's all right. Next time I work on it, at least I'll be able to use it to split kindling. It's coming along nicely. But before it can take its permanent home over there in my log, two processes remain. I want to polish it, and I want to file that. First, the polishing. Take a look at the scratches that were left from the original grinding. They're moving kind of in this direction, but I want those scratches to be smaller, and I want them to go in the direction that I'm actually using the tool. So do that. This is the really low grit, the coarse one that I used to do the original grinding, but the polishing I'll do with this old one, and there's barely anything left. It's pretty much just some fabric that rubs on it at high speed. If I do this correctly, it will be shiny, and there will be less friction with each stroke. didn't say this was perfect, but I will say that it's fast. And the key point is that it feels nice and smooth, which means that it's going to wedge itself in with very little friction and pull out just the same. And now finally the good part. this part pretty extensively in other places so I'm not going to focus too much 
of my effort here. Just remember to take some back, to take some material from back here. You want to keep the file at a really, really low angle to get some of this material here. Don't just have it down like this just to focus on the tip. You can do that and get it sharp real quickly, but it's only going to hurt you in the long run. Kind of an interesting point about a hatchet, an, ed an edge like this, a bit, is that it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's never done. It's just like you or I, where forever works in progress. And so th throughout the entire course of its life, it will change. It's never finished. But just as with you or I, at any specific point in our history, we want to be sharp. <laughs> okay, see you on the next subject. So, this is its maiden voyage. <laughs> and what, what else would you start it out on? Some nice, straight-grained pine. It's like air. It's great stuff to start a fire with because it's not dense like other woods. It's, it's like it's filled with air. You know, here's something dense, oak. That's hard, but it's dry. This has been seasoned. Uh, here's a piece of maple. Ooh, it's got kind of a knot thing there. That's a bit on the extreme side for this hatchet. Maple burns hot and clean. Here are some slabs of black walnut. It's not black on the outside. The, it's only the inner stuff that's dark. The heartwood. This outer wood, you can see a little bit of the brownness to it. The outer wood is light. It's honestly very difficult to tell the difference between this and toilet poplar. Here we got some cherry. Cherry's hard, burns nice, has a nice smell. It's abundant here on this property. It's got that reddish tint to it. Great firewood. Wow. Well, there's our sunbeam, so take a look at the finished product. Would I recommend buying one? No. But after some work, it's usable. It's not a bad hatchet. I'm sure it'll last a long time. So do the best you can with what you have. Hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, it's a work in progress. It's never done. I'll stone it probably. Not tonight, but I will eventually stone it. And I'll be refiling it constantly and giving the handle more coats of oil. It's never done. <laughs>